Welcome you to my beautiful country, Egypt, or as we say here, Ahlan wa Sahlan, Bikum from Masr. I urge the people of Egypt to be aware of this bird borne disease and to look after their poultry and, of course, to look after themselves and their families. I commend the international community for their initiatives to combat avian influenza in bird populations and to make sure that this virus does not become a threat to public health. Our beloved Egypt has always been at the forefront of history. Let's continue making history in our effort to deal effectively with the avian and pandemic influenza. Thank you very much. Use soap and water to wash your hands and clothes. Make sure your chicken is well cooked. These are just a few of the TV messages being sung to millions in Egypt by one of the country's most popular singers, Shaban Abdul Rahim. Bird flu is dangerous and infectious, he says. Be careful. The media clip is part of Egypt's integrated national plan for avian and human influenza. The national plan aims at effectively minimizing the spread of bird flu through strong community mobilization and government intervention. Egypt's national plan is supported by an international partnership bringing together the international technical agencies such as the Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Organization for Animal Health and the World Health Organization and donors such as the European Commission, USA, the African Development Bank and the World Bank. The TV clips with Shaban and famous Egyptian actress Intisar address households and small farmers. They carry messages of vital importance to combating avian influenza, first reported in the country in February 2006. No playing around with poultry, Intisar explains. Make sure your poultry is closed in cages and not in contact with migrating birds. Cover your chicken coop. The clips, seen by millions around the country, focus on women and children, those most affected by avian flu. Your chickens are precious, but your children are more precious, says Shaban. Don't let them play near poultry. And if you've been dealing with poultry, change your clothes before sitting with your children. The media campaign includes educational spots, radio mini-dramas, talk shows and children's songs. We are here to request not to raise chickens at home, declares this TV spot. And if birds are alive, it continues, please do not buy them and don't accept them, even if given out free. The TV spots also explain what signs to look for in suspected cases of bird flu and reassure a rapid recovery if the infected person gets medical help in time. And some of them provide an avian flu hotline to Egypt's agriculture ministry to inquire about the virus or to report suspected outbreaks. Be responsible and help us combat bird flu ends this TV announcement, a reminder that all Egyptians are called to play a role in this national plan. Egypt has reported more than a thousand outbreaks of bird flu and poultry, affecting both commercial and backyard production, mostly in the Nile Delta region. In July 2008, Egypt formally declared that the disease is endemic throughout the country's poultry stock. Authorities have confirmed 50 human infections and at least 22 fatalities, mostly among women and children. More than one million birds are said to have died from the virus and almost nine million destroyed. Most of Egypt's poultry production system has been affected, from large and small commercial production units to backyard and rooftop productions in rural and urban areas. Over 36 million birds have been culled, negatively affecting the local poultry industry and the income of the one and a half million individuals whose livelihoods depend on poultry. In addition to the media campaign, social mobilization and community awareness campaigns are being implemented in the field. 
the country's Ministry of Health and Population has deployed more than 2,500 community health workers who were trained to deliver key preventive and behavioral messages. NGOs and religious leaders are also involved to ensure their full commitment and support. In high and medium risk governorates, key messages have been placed on large billboards in populated areas like markets, bus stations and train stations. Under the plan, Egypt's government has overseen the mass vaccination and sampling of birds in commercial farms and backyard flocks. It has enhanced the capacity of the country's central laboratory and its satellites, and has trained field veterinarians and emergency teams by way of seminars and informative videos on means of dealing with the disease. Resources from the multi-donor avian and human influenza facility are being mobilized to support Egypt's efforts in combating avian influenza. The avian and human influenza facility has received 77% of its contribution from the European Commission. And the impact in Egypt is already important, as the number of cases of avian flu has declined significantly over the last three years. The European Commission is also further developing regional coordination and cooperation systems. For example, within the EU, member states established a close collaboration to address the management of a possible pandemic. The Euroflu seminar held in France in September 2008, with 28 countries participating, dealt with issues of health strategies and cross-border cooperation. The European Commission and EU member states will be able to share the lessons learned with regional cooperation projects. The United Nations Senior Influenza Coordinator, UNSIC, has been playing a central role in establishing alliances, linkages and agreements in global and regional support for country-level influenza coordination and interagency coordination. In 2007, a 7.14 million US dollar grant to Egypt has been approved under the multi-donor avian and human influenza facility administered by the World Bank to assist in minimizing the threat of the disease to human health and poultry and to prepare for, control and respond to an influenza pandemic and other infectious disease emergencies. Among the nine donors to the facility, the European Commission is by far the most generous contributor, with a 77% share of donor contribution. The other contributors are Australia, China, Estonia, Iceland, Korea, Russia, Slovenia and the United Kingdom. There has been much progress against avian and human influenza. But as the TV clips illustrate, there are major challenges left in Egypt's struggle against avian influenza. Bad backyard poultry practices with inadequate biosecurity, people who continue to slaughter poultry at home, the dense population in many of the infected areas, and questions of compensation for those small farmers whose production has been negatively affected. Okay. 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 But it's agreed that the efforts of Egypt's government, combined with those of the international community, are paving the way towards even more successes in the country's fight against the disease. <laughs> Following the New Delhi roadmap, the government of Egypt has been working to protect poultry farmers' livelihood and maintain national public health. These efforts in the field of pandemic preparedness and animal disease control represent an important contribution of Egypt to the international community's global public goods agenda. In December 2005, President Mubarak held a ministerial meeting to review the preparedness plan for prevention and control of avian influenza. A committee headed by the Prime Minister followed the presidential meeting, bringing together various stakeholders to implement the contingency plan against the AI. In 2008, the Ministers of Agriculture and Health are hosting and organizing the fixed interministerial conference on avian and pandemic influenza in Egypt.